All right, what's up animators? So today, I try to make this animation with buttons. So check this out, play button, bam. Little pumpkin here, pie winks. Boom, transform So pumpkin pie, baby. Does it itself. You don't even gotta make it. There it goes. And of course, got a stop button here, stop. There you go. Not transforming because I stopped it. Play button and shape tween into a pumpkin pie. Delicious. It's like the best pumpkin ever. It says hi, winks at you, and uh, sacrifice itself by transforming into a pumpkin pie. Delicious. All right, so let's get started on that. Uh, so first, you want to think of a pumpkin. So what shape is a pumpkin? It's a circular shape, right? So I'm going to go here to my tools panel. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button right here on the shape tool right here. Right now I've got the rectangle tool and I want to get the uh, oval tool. Here it is, oval tool. Cool, so now i got an oval and I want to make that orange. Go over here to the properties panel, make sure i got the tool, uh, tool tab selected. And for fill color, I'll go with an orange color. Uh, obviously not all pumpkins are oranges. I don't know if uh, are orange colored. But if you guys looked around, some are kind of yellow, some are white, some are green, and some are a combination of those colors. You have spots and stuff like that, stripes. Uh, for stroke, no stroke. I don't want a stroke, don't need it. Just a nice uh, solid color here. So I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button and create an uh, oval shape. And you can make try to make a perfect circle by holding on shift. But then I think that'll make it harder for the pumpkin to stand. So that's why I'm going with an oval shape here. So something like that, just freehanding it. All right, I want this to be in the center. So I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna go here to align. Align horizontal center. Cool, now I gotta align the vertical center, right click it again, align, vertical center. Cool, there we go. I gotta hand that over here that I made for my students and see what the next step is. Cool, so now I'm gonna make the eyes. So to make the eyes, usually you know you carve them in, usually you make them triangular. Of course, if you're a pumpkin artist, pumpkin carving master, you can make all kinds of faces in there, cool little scene, but they'll be animate, cute little uh, jack-o'-lantern. So I'm gonna go here to the uh, shape tool Hold on the left mouse button. I'm gonna go to the Polysar tool to make triangular eyes and a triangular nose. Polysar tool, there we go. So the Polysar tool will allow me to create rectangles. Sorry, triangles, triangles. Uh, you can make a rectangle with that, but you're better off using the rectangle tool. And all right, so this is for the object, this one here. And I don't want those settings. I want the ones for the uh, Polysar tool here. So I'm gonna click on tool right here on the properties panel. And here we go. So polygon. Uh, five sides. A triangle has three sides. Try. So change that number right here to three. Enter. And then the color of my triangle, it's going to be black for the, the eyes of my jack o' lantern here. All right. So I'm going to make a triangle eye over here off to the side. Not too big. You know, maybe you want to, if you want a one eye jack o' lantern, that's cool too. You know, it's your, your jack o' lantern, however you want to make it. Just freehanding it there. Cool. That looks good to me. I'm going to here selection tool. I'm going to click on it there. All right, I'm gonna create a duplicate. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, alternate, right next to spacebar. I'm gonna hold down the left mouse button on my eye here, then drag out a duplicate there. Boom, let go of the mouse, and then the alternate key. And I'll create another duplicate, hold down Alt, hold down the mouse, and while holding down the left mouse button, just drag out, let go of the mouse, and then alternate. Cool, there you go. So I got three eyes. Just kidding, this is gonna be a nose. So um, if you like, you can leave the nose like that, pointing up. Or you can flip it if you want to flip it. Go ahead and select it and then right click it and then go over here to, I think it's transform. Yeah. And then flip vertical. There you go. So now you got to point it down. So however you want to make it. So I'm going to bring these in. I think I'll try bringing in the eyes first. I'm going to click on one eye here and then this one. Drag them over. See, that looks like a good spot there. You can have them low, high, however you want to make it. And you can try to freehand it. Get approximately in the center somewhere. That looks good. I'm going for accuracy here. Now I'm going to bring this one in, hold down the left mouse button and drag it over for my nose. Yeah, right, around, right around there looks good. Cool. So now I'm going to make the mouth and the mouth uh, is an oval shape. So I'll make an oval shape and I'll cut out the top half and now I got a, like a hemisphere, hemi oval. All right, so from Polystar tool, back to the oval shape, hold down the left mouse, left mouse uh, button on it. And oops, there we go, I got the oval tool. And that's also going to be black. And I'll create an oval down here. So I can try to get like a eyeball the length of the mouth. Don't want to make it too big. So then I just cut out the whole pumpkin. And then you can choose how wide you want the mouth to be. So maybe I got a hungry uh, jack-o'-lantern like me. There we go. Now I'm going to go here to the selection tool. I'm going to drag select the top right here. The top right there. 
Cool. See, so now I got the top pixelated right there. Oh, I selected the top of that shape, not the whole shape, just the top. So I'm going to delete the top half right there to make my smile. And you go delete. Cool. So I got a smile. Uh, if you prefer to have a frowning pumpkin, that's cool too, but I like a happy pumpkin. All right. So now I'm going to make a tooth. If you like, you can use a triangle tool, the polystar tool to make triangles, and you can chip off a tooth, or you can use a square tool, the rectangle tool to make a square tooth. We'll go to rectangle tool here. And I'm going to make it the pumpkin color here. So I'm going to click inside the fill. And using the pipe bit, I'm just going to sample the color here, the jack-o'-lantern. There we go. And I'm going to make a square around here. Uh, there we go. Selection tool. I'm going to bring it in right in there. There it is. Click out of it. And I'm going to click it again and delete it. There you go. I got, I got a tooth. You want to make the, uh, the sharp teeth? You can do that too. You want to make a sharp tooth. I'm just going to duplicate this one right here. Hold on the alternate key. Actually, this one right here. It's pointing down. Hold on the alternate key. Drag it out. And let go of the mouse first and then alternate. And change the color of this. What's so active. There we go. I'm going to click it there and delete it. So I'm going to decide to click and select and deselect. Cool. So I've got a sharp tooth and then a flat tooth. Make sure you go to see the dentist. If uh, you don't like the shape here, you can actually hover your mouse on the inside of the shape until you get the little eyelash um symbol next to your mouse cursor and you can pull it out okay? you can do something like that like hey what's up what's up make something like that and you can try to even it on the other side oops i didn't get the little curve there you go but i kind of like it how i had it there you go that's pretty cool and freehand it in there just drag and drop and you can also use the arrows on your on your mouse. Sorry, the arrows on your keyboard to adjust the mouth or any other symbols. If you like how it is, you can just click out of it and you're good. Because if you change your mind later, if you try to take it out, you're going to clip out from it. You don't want to do that. And then you just click it back in and click out. Uh, if you do want to fix it and you don't want that to happen, just Control-Z, undo. Control-Z. There it is. See? Control-Z. Computer software is a lot more forgiving than life. There we go. And you can still go over here on the inside of your jack lantern and try to adjust it. You got the little uh, eyelash, little curve icon next to your arrow. You can pull it out a bit. There you go. All right, so now I'm going to make a stem. And the stem, what shape is that? Rectangular shape. You were flattening down the stem in uh, two dimensions, to two dimensions instead of three. You get a rectangle. So fill in there the rectangle. All right, so I'm going to click right here in orange. I got the rectangle tool selected. I'm gonna go over here to the tool properties panel and click in here to create a color for my stem. And stem usually it's green, could be yellow, could be uh, green yellow. It's gonna make a stem up here up top somewhere. That looks good. Selection tool. And now I'll bring it in. Do the arrow key. That's my stem. I can go in a little bit more. Kinda, there we go. Let me click out of there. Cool. So I like that. It looks good. There's my jack o' lantern. Looking good. All right. So this is what I'm start out with. Here's my first frame. And I'm going to keyframe this into a future frame. And then later I'm going to have it uh, do an eye wink for us. So how far am I going to have my jack-o'-lantern in here for? Up to the frame 40. And then I'm going to keyframe 50 and 80. All right. So right click frame 40 right here. Insert keyframe. And then right click 50 and then right click uh, 80. So right click 50 here, insert keyframe, and then right click 80, insert keyframe. If you can't access these future frames, down here at the bottom of the timeline frames, there should be a bar. You can hold down the left mouse button on it and you can drag it out. See? So you can like uh, pull out in a way, pull out more frames. There we go. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go back over here to frame 40. There we go, in frame 40. Click on frame 40. The one insert a keyframe. My entire jack-o'-lantern here is selected. Let me just click out of there. There we go. Uh, I want to delete this eye right here. So I'm going to click on it, then delete. It's going to be my winking eye. Uh, you can make a different eye wink. Or maybe you can uh, transform the smile. And I'm going to color this in here. Uh, so another thing I could have done, let me undo that, Control-Z. It's probably easier. Just select your eye. And then go here to Object, and then Fill. And just change it to the color of the jack-o'-lantern. So just sample the color there. There you go. Now the eye's gone. Let me click out of there. And click back and it's gone. I was going to delete it and then use the paint bucket to fill it in, but this is actually faster, the method I just used. All right, so now I'm going to have a, a little rectangular eye here for the wink. So here's the rectangle tool, and this is going to be black. 
and just make a, a rectangle in here. You can make it outside of it and then bring it in later too. You can do that. There we go. So that's from frame 40 to 49. So let's check that out. Play it around with here. Play it. Pull it back and forth. Make a little eye wing right there. There we go. I don't get winked that that often, but so I gotta animate it. Gotta animate my new life. All right, so over to frame 100. We're gonna go over to frame 100. So what I'm doing here, the reason I have all these key frames from frame one to 39, jack o' lantern is just there, and then we're in these these uh, 10 frames here. It's gonna wink, and then over here from 10 to 80, I'm gonna insert a shape tween where it's gonna transform into a pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna go over here to 80. Click on 80, uh, frame 80 here, keyframe 80, and I'm going to delete it. And right here in frame 80 is where it transforms into a, a pumpkin pie. And while in frame 80, I'm going to create the pie because from, sorry, not frame 80, frame, 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 it is frame 80. All right, so I got it now. So from 50 to 80, it's just a regular jack o' lantern. And then from 80 to 100, transforms to a pumpkin pie. So the shape tween is going to happen from 80 to 100. So I'm going to go here to 100. And remember, use this bar here to pull out additional frames. Go back to past frames or future frames. So I'm going to right click on frame 100 here. Insert keyframe. There we go. And now that I'm in there in frame 100, I can delete the pumpkin. If your whole pumpkin is, doesn't have this mesh pattern that it's selected, just select the frame there. Go down here, hit the delete key, delete on my keyboard, and it's gone. All right, so I'm going to make the uh, pumpkin pan. A pie pan, so that's an oval shape. So I'm gonna go down here, shape tool, and select oval. There we go. And I'm gonna go to the fill color, and you go with gray. You know, we want to go with the metallic color. I'm gonna use this gradient right here. This will look a little more metallic. It's a black and white gradient, and just make an oval there for a pipe for a pie pan. There we go. So I'm gonna click on it, selection tool there, right click. And I'm going to align it in the center so it's in the center just like my pumpkin. Because if not, it's going to start shifting over. It's going to transform and move somewhere else on my stage. Right click again, align. I just did horizontal center. Now for a vertical center. There we go. So now it's in the center. And the pumpkin pie is right there as well, the pumpkin. All right. So I got to make the pie filling. So oval tool again. And go to fill. And pumpkin pie filling is it brown? Is there an orange? Somewhere in the middle. I don't know. Not exactly sure what color it is. It depends on the food coloring they use at the at the uh, the pie plant, the pie factory. I actually got a tour of a pie factory one time. It's freaking awesome. All right, so I'm gonna drag select that there above it, and then I'm gonna bring it in. So I make it above it somewhere just so I can get a feel for how it should look, and then I bring it in. All right, so let me use the arrows here on the keyboard. Just freehanding it. Maybe you want to see the, the rim in the back back there, so you can bring it down. If not, you can bring it up higher. So if you want to see a little bit of the rim in the back, you can bring it down lower, however you want to make it. That looks pretty cool. And I'm not going to use all the align tools. It's, I'm just freehanding it. That looks good to me there. Let me click out of it. Cool. So there's my pie. And if um, I can add the shape tween, I can add the shape tween right now. So somewhere between 80 and 99. Right click in there, create shape tween. You see your pumpkin start to transform to a pumpkin pie. If you reanimate this, you're only going to see the pumpkin pie for one frame. The speed of this animation is 30 frames per second. So for um, 1 30th of a second, you'll see the pumpkin pie. So then you got to add another keyframe in there. So hit control enter to test it out. See, then the pie just disappears real fast. So you want to you want to give it uh, give the viewer some time to see the pie so they see what happens. So we're going to go over here to frame 130, so you get a whole second to see it. So from 100 all the way to 130, you'll get a whole second to see the pie. And one second doesn't sound like a lot, but it's more than enough for your viewer, for your audience to see the pie. Insert keyframe. There we go. Control enter. Wink. And there we go. What's up, buddy? I want to be a pie so bad. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right. So now we got our functional animation there. Now to create the stop and play button. So first I'm gonna lock this layer up so I don't mess it up. I'm gonna re rename this layer. I'm gonna double click right here on layer one. Pumpkin pie. So you wanna use an underscore there. There we go. And I'm gonna add another layer plus sign. And this one's gonna be called buttons. Double click there and call it buttons. 
All right, so I locked my pumpkin layer there, and here's my buns layer. And notice when I added the layer, I added a bunch of frames in here that adds up to the uh, equal amount of frames that I have in my pumpkin layer. And I need that, I want that, that way my, my buttons are consistent throughout the whole animation. So I'm gonna go over back over to frame one, and you also could just drag this and then click on frame one. But make sure you click on frame one. We wanna be in frame one, bus making the buttons in frame one, they'll be out through the whole buttons layer. All right, so I want a stop and go, a stop and play button, stop and play buttons. So the symbol for play, usually it's a triangle. I'm gonna go here to a polystar tool, make a triangle. And polygon, three sides, cool, just what I want in. And usually play or go, well, those colors are like blue or green, so I'm gonna go with green. So I'm going here to fill, fill and select the green color here. There's a nice bright green color. And create a, a green triangle over here somewhere. That looks cool, selection tool, maybe bring it down a bit. You can have it down here, I mean, wherever you want. I'm just gonna put it on the left side, right here to the left of my jack-o'-lantern there. All right, so now I'll make a stop button. Mm, I won't think about, uh, maybe make a red circular button, but that could also mean record. But I know for sure stop is a hexagonal sign around the world. So I got the polystar tool again, and a hexagon has six sides. There we go. And a stop sign is red. So here to fill, and choose red. And see, there we go, stop sign. Something like that. Selection tool and bring it down around there. Uh, looks cool. Click out of there. Cool. So this is gonna be my play button and that's gonna be my stop button. All right, but there's still not buttons. I still have to convert them. Gotta convert them to a symbol. So I'm gonna right click here my play button and then go over here to convert to symbol and type should be button, center registration. And then the name is very important. You cannot name it play, you cannot name it button. But you can name it play underscore button and you want the uh, it's case sensitive you want to be aware of these caps because later when we use the code uh the code has to match this name here but you cannot name a button play button stop go up down or any other direction because then it's going to confuse the code it thinks it's uh, you're telling it what to do so instead we're going to name it play underscore button i'm going to copy that control c okay and this is another important uh Vital step here in the process of creating a button. After you create your button, you're gonna go over here in the properties panel. Make sure you got the properties for your object, for your which is a symbol here, a button symbol. And down here is instance name. I have to keep that same name, so I'm gonna click in there and Control V to paste it. There we go. If you forgot to copy it, it's all right. Look, it's down here. You can just retype it. Make sure you got the same case uh, sensitivity there. So I got the P and the B uppercase, and everything else is lowercase. All right. So same process for the stop button. Stop button. Step on that name. It stop button. Right click it. Convert to symbol, that's gonna be stop underscore button. And Adobe remembers the last thing I did and I was making a button and send a registration. So I don't gotta worry about that, it's already there. And I'm gonna copy that as well. Control A, Control C, okay. Control A to select all, Control C to copy. Click and then his name, Control V to paste. There we go, stop button, all right. So there they are. Uh, they're still not gonna work, I still need the code, so. I don't know the language here. I'm gonna go to window and actions and you would just start writing your code here, but I don't, I don't know, I don't know this code. So fortunately, I found a code here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. This is from my handout. If you're watching this video, I'll copy and paste this code in the, um, in, the, uh, in the description for the video. I'll just copy and paste the code in there. If you don't know how to access it, here's the video I was watching. Go down here, if it's not there, click on show more and then you'll find the code in there somewhere you can copy and paste it. I wasn't watching the video, I was listening to his music, some nice chill lo-fi beats. Uh, so I copied it and I'm gonna hit control V to paste, there it is, cool. And uh, notice this here, it says play button. That's the exact same name of my play button, what I named it with the underscore and everything. Here's a stop button with the underscore and there it is right there. So if my video is stopped, uh, the play button is looking for this event here, mouse click, so you click on it and then it'll play it. If the video is playing, if uh, you click on the mouse, on the button, on the stop button, then it'll stop the animation. So you can kind of try to make some sense from there, but make sure these two names right here, lines three and lines 10, match up with the names of your symbols, of your buttons. All right, and then to save that, just close it, just close it. And if you got, forgot how to access that, it's just window and then actions or F9. All right, so I'm gonna control enter to test it out. All right, here's my animation. Then you pause it, boom, stop the midway. See, it's trying to transform into a pumpkin pie. 
to play by and the animation continues stop not transforming play button it's going to transform shape between there we go cool so they work so you can't tell if you click them or not right uh, we could have an animation in the background like um, something just sliding like a classic screen there and then um, if this stops then it'll help you better identify if it's if it's stopped or not but we can also change the colors of the buttons if you click on them or if you hover over them so i'll show you that uh, first what i want to do is change the color of the stage that's why it looks kind of boring so let's make it a little more vibrant you can click on the stage and then go to the properties panel or just look for doc the doc tab up here doc for document and then once you access the document uh, menu here on the properties panel look for stage the wide uh, rectangle next to stage click in there you can change the color of your stage gray color purple color something that looks good with all these colors i think purple is kind of good got some joker 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 colors uh kind of also looks like uh, halloween colors so that's cool i like that right there all right and then i'm going to double click my play button here to get to edit email cool so if you notice my timeline there changed if you want to get out of this just hit this arrow here so here's my regular timeline let me make it a little wider and double click one of your objects your symbols double click a symbol takes it to editing mode so now i can edit my symbol because before i couldn't make much changes for it so notice there's only, there's only four frames up there this is up over down and hit these are the four different phases of a button so the button's up and then when you hover your mouse over a button you can have it change colors when the button's down or after you hit the button you can have it change colors as well so i'm going to copy these frames over so i'm just going to right click here and insert keyframe insert keyframe so i don't, you don't have to necessarily select copy just insert keyframe for each of them and then you get um, a new keyframe there copied over for you so up over down so i want to change the color of it um, when i click it so i'm gonna click on down right here and i'm just gonna go with the darker shade so this is only going to affect this button here so i got that frame selected so make sure you select the frame select everything inside that frame which right now is just that button go over here to the properties panel click on object and here's the color i can change the color of my button there so i'm gonna click right there and let me try a darker shade of green there we go so now if i click on it it'll turn green uh, you can also change the over so when you hover your mouse over it it could be a different color so let me click on over and then object and then right here to fill let me try to make a lighter green so that's already really light so i'll make like a blue color there we go so now i'm going to exit that Control enter to test it out so because i changed the over when i have my mouse over it, it's going to change colors so and let's hover over it there we go it's blue and then if i click it's going to change colors again oh we gotta pause it there you go it gives me that dark green for like a moment it's not too noticeable see i'm holding it and you can see it there when it starts that dark green cool all right so close that out now for the uh the stop sign here i'm gonna double click it there you go i'm just gonna insert these keyframes over here so these are all for the different states of the button insert keyframes then for the down i'm gonna try like a darker uh darker red so click inside down go over here to objects click on the down frame on the frame itself and then for fill i can try a burgundy but it's gonna blend in too much with the background because i got like that uh purple background well, let's see what I, how this looks cool looks like a nice scary burgundy all right then we're here for overframe so i'm gonna hover over it maybe i'll make it like a hot pink object fill and there we go that looks good and then exit out of there control enter see so hover over it changes colors so that you know you're on it pause it play there we go cool so it works and ever whenever you have your buttons it does a, a color shift as well the color change all right i'm going to save this one file save as buttons and pumpkins dot fla that way i have the splash file it's an animation file here enemy file i can come back and work on it pumpkins you gotta always make sure the spelling on that one save uh this one you don't wouldn't want to save it as a video because then the buttons wouldn't work so i'm going to save it as a swift file file export and export movie yes and then save as type right here make sure it's dot swf swift file if it's not just click in there and select dot swf and you can leave it with the same naming or you can change it it's going to be a different file it's not going to overwrite your old one because it's a different file extension then save there you go if you want to use this for one of the other adobe um, applications like uh, dreamweaver you want to use it on a website you go to file and then just click, click publish 
publish, and then now your Swift file will be compatible with the Dreamweaver. But that's it. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Hope everybody enjoys their fall. Hope you uh, enjoy pumpkin spice everything, pumpkin spice latte, pumpkin spice cologne, pumpkin spice perfume, pumpkin spice shampoo, lotion, pumpkin spice shrimp. Actually, it doesn't sound too good. All right. But have an awesome day. Thank you.